What is up, Rad Potential YouTube, and welcome to today's Radformational video. This video has been a long time in the making. I have accumulated a bunch of data from a bunch of different engines that I've had personal interaction with, and I've kept all these parts over these years just to make this video. In addition, I pulled the engine out of the Black FD, which is an engine that I built last year specifically to test a combination of Apex Seals premix and knowing the condition of the engine before we ran it for a certain duration of time. So I don't have a fancy engine dyno to be able to put different engines together, run them under extreme load, extreme heat with different Apex Seal combinations, different new housings versus resurfaced housings versus this premix at this ratio. So me running that engine was my test per se about 7,000 miles, pull the engine out, and we'll look at it. But before I show you the inside of this engine, I want to kind of give you guys a good feel for some normal wear inside of a rotary engine. The apex seals in a rotary engine are at the tips of the rotor, and they ride around the perimeter of the housing, creating the three combustion chambers per rotor per housing combination right? Inevitably, there's going to be some wear along that interface because you have a metal on metal interface, albeit the housing itself, okay, is made of aluminum. It has a steel sleeve pressed in it effectively, much like a piston engine does. The apex seal is steel. Unless you have some fancy race engine that uses carbon apex seals, you most likely have steel ones. Now, Moving from left to right here, I have a variety of apex seals, and I'll put this picture up on the screen so you can see it nice and clearly. In addition to, as I go through these seals, I'm going to try to put very close up pictures so you can see the texture of the end of the seal. We're going to start with my control seal. This is a brand new carbon apex seal. It's three millimeters, and what I'm going to try to do for you guys, I have an aluminum straight edge right here. And I'm going to drag this across that straight edge and hopefully you can hear the noise or lack of noise that this makes. So what you notice is more of a violin-like smoothness with this brand new carbon apex seal. And that's because it's perfectly smooth. This has not been grooved by any of the housings. So that's what we're going to call the control, which is a 10 out of 10. Starting with an RX-8. RX-8s are notorious for wearing out apex seals, mainly because they're really short. These apex seals start out short because in a rotary engine, the lighter the apex seal, the faster you can spin this engine without the apex seal bouncing up and down. This apex seal came out of my green RX-8s engine that we'll say had approximately 80 to 100,000 miles on it. It was low compression on the front rotor, but not enough to not run only enough to give me some misfires. I would rate this seal, as far as its condition, an eight out of 10. So listen to this. So you can hear a couple little ticks or jumps in that noise. What that is, is some excess groove or a high and low spot in this apex seal. Remember, the carbon one's brand new, perfectly smooth. You get that violin-like smoothness. Couple little nicks in this one, but arguably the housings from this engine look really good. And these Apex seals, aside from being short and wore out, are in really good shape. Housings, very much reusable. The next Apex seal I have here is from an FD RX-7, so it's an REW 13B. This engine had 28,000 kilometers on it whenever we took it apart. It had a failed water seal, okay? But this is an OEM three-piece apex seal from that engine. So you see that it's short, much like the RX-8 one. It would have actually had a second piece to make up that thickness under it. This one I would rate like a 9.5 out of 10. It is literally nearly perfectly smooth. I can't feel anything wrong with it. And you're gonna hear that right here. Nice and crisp tone. Those two apex seals were ran for a large amount of their life, the FD one basically its entire life, and the RX-8 one for probably 95% of its life with no premix and just on the oil metering pump. 
Now, both of these seals composition, because they are factory OEM Mazda seals, are much softer than the next two seals we're gonna look at right now. This seal is an iRotary Apex seal that came out of an FDRX7. This was the engine that was in the black car probably two years ago. It was a half bridge port engine with used housings, but new iRotary Apex seals. The housings, I believe, weren't resurfaced before it got built, as this engine got built before we got our resurfacing tool. So these, I would rate this about a seven out of 10. It's got some visible grooves on it. Definitely has some grooves that I can feel with my fingernail coming across here, but nothing crazy excessive. And we didn't notice too much chatter on the housings. And I'll show you a picture of that housing right now that this came out of. There's some decent longitudinal grooves in that housing from these apex seals. However, this next picture I'm showing you is the same engine's housing resurfaced. So we were able to get a majority of those grooves back out. So let's take a listen. So you can hear no crazy hiccups or bounces in that, but an overall different tone from the smoothness. You can hear the roughness in this apex seal. Like I said, seven out of 10, this was ran with one ounce per gallon of premix. And that's a boosted half bridge port engine. This last one is an RA Rotary Aviation Super Seal. These, I believe, yeah, this is the blue one. So this is a cryo treated seal. You can see on there, Super Seal. This one, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. I can feel a decent bit of grooves in here. Grooves that catch my nail, whereas the iRotary Apex seal was kind of just uniformly a bit more rough, if that makes sense. This one has some outliers of some grooves. These were ran in an REW engine for approximately five to 6,000 miles, pre-mixed at one ounce per gallon as well. And these, like I said, six out of 10, You can hear that ticking as I run that across there. Definitely not the smoothest, but the housings from this engine were able to be resurfaced to be what I would say is 90% smooth or 95% smooth. They were really good. There were some grooves in them that we didn't want to surface out because didn't want to take too much material off, but overall, this seal is by far the worst one out of something that came out of an engine that didn't break. Keep in mind, all of these engines that I've shown you so far, aside from the iRotary one which broke a side seal, were taken apart in running condition. So that's those apex seals. We're gonna look at these housings really quick, and then we're gonna go look at this engine. Taking a look at these housings, from right to left is gonna be worst, resurfaced, best. This, is the housing that came out of that half bridge engine. You can see some scoring in here. You can hear the scoring, but overall uniform. Remember, the iRotary Apex seals were the ones that, yes, they were a bit rough, but they didn't have any outlandish mountains or valleys on them. This housing, the middle one, came from the same engine. I've resurfaced the bottom of it here, and you can tell just how much nicer and smoother that looks. You can hear how much less noise the pick makes running across it just in that area. And you can still see the residual wear up here. Same apex seal, resurfaced, definitely still usable, but some decent wear. And like I said, these were used housings, put in an engine and ran for probably five to 6,000 miles before it broke a side seal and we had to take it apart. This one is a housing from my 80 to 100,000 mile RX-8 engine. And you can see, 
it doesn't really have any excessive wear in here. Now I can feel, I mean, you can just hear how quiet it is. I can feel a couple high spots and low spots running my fingernail across it, but nothing that catches. You can see some edge wear coming in here and you'll see that a lot more with higher mileage engines. Even though the surface looks really clean, higher mileage engines will have more edge wear. But arguably, this is nearly a perfect surface for a quick resurface and running a new seal. So what would you say, now that you've seen these and you're like, well, the guy that ran these REW engines and premixed, these housings are roached, and the guy that ran this RX-8 engine and didn't premix, his housing looks mint. So it would be a little counterintuitive to what we're kind of talking about, which is premixing an apex seal wear. Now, getting to this engine, the case study on this engine in the black FD is iRotary apex seals, resurfaced housings, and we ran this engine on one ounce per gallon, renewable lubricants, bio-rotary racing premix. The thing that I love, and I will show you the pictures of the inside of this engine, is yes, these iRotary apex seals are hard. I think they are the contributing factor to the majority of the wear in this engine. The other thing is the cleanliness of the carbon buildup in this engine is awesome. The bio-rotary premix burns super clean, seems to lubricate really well. In my RX-8, it seems to lubricate really well as well. It burns super clean. But I do think when you're gonna run a harder seal, so these iRotary seals, the Rotary Aviation Super Seals, that you're gonna need to up the premix from one ounce per gallon. Whenever I build the new engine for this FD, which is most likely gonna have iRotary Apex seals in it, and when this engine goes back in the FC, I think we're gonna premix just a little bit heavier. And I don't think that that is the fault of the premix. This premix burns super clean. Um, looking down in here, it's gonna be nearly impossible for me to show you on this camera, but I'll put the pictures up. You can see how nice the ends of the rotors are. This car, the philosophy behind the tune of this car, which is not something that I would do, but the owner of the car does this, is it's tuned a little bit rich. It's probably a half a point to three quarters of a point AFR rich compared to ideal. But the philosophy there is rather change spark plugs than change an engine from running it too lean and blowing it up. So the car does run a little bit rich. It does smell a little bit more than normal at idle. You do get a little bit of smoke on startup, which is all fuel smoke, just black smoke. And it lives. This car tends to just, you know, this engine setup, the street port, the tune we had in it, it just rips, runs good. That's why everything is getting paced into the FC. But even with it running that rich, it's so clean on the inside. I've taken apart engines where premixed at too much, two ounces per gallon, not the right premix, not good premix, just Walmart premix, and taking apart the engine, the corner seals, side seals, apex seals are just gunked up in the rotor. They don't move freely. It's like there's a glue in there from all this unburnt oil and built up carbon and that's not good. And the one thing that we definitely don't see any of that, the apex seals in this engine are super springy. The engine's super clean, you know, black soot, but no major buildup. With this renewable lubricants premix, it's working really well. Around here, the other brand of premix that I tend to run because I can get it at O'Reilly's is this Lucas Oil Marine premix. And here's what I notice running this versus running the Bio Rotary Racing premix is, I've got four spark plugs here. These two on the right are from my RX-8. This is last year's, all the track days. You can see, nice and brown. Honestly, a little bit too lean, but this is with one ounce per gallon of premix and the factory oil metering pump. This plug here in the middle came from the black FD engine running, say, 20% too rich with one ounce per gallon of premix and this is a turbo car street driven turbo car so some highway miles honestly how it gets driven though it's a turbo fun weekend car it kind of gets ripped on versus just cruised around but this set of spark plugs did make the trip to deals gap and back which was some highway miles 
this plug, which is what I see the difference in, you can see nice clean soot on here, some flakiness on mine. You'll see on this plug, there are some chunks of carbon on this plug. Now, this last plug came out of my rotary truck. And the rotary truck, it's a half bridge port. It gets ripped on. It gets one ounce per gallon of premix and 87 octane. And it gets the Lucas Oil Cheap premix because I drive the thing all the time. It gets tons of miles put on it. And honestly, the mileage could be a factor in this as well. But I definitely don't put that much more miles on my truck than I do the RX-8. And the RX-8 plugs look a million times better. But what I'm getting at is that chunky buildup is a result of what I think is the ineffective burn of the premix. So the combustion chamber in the truck is not getting hot enough to burn this cheaper, thicker premix. Whereas when I've been running the renewable lubricants bio rotary racing premix, it tends to burn much cleaner, less carbon buildup per unit mixed in. So at one ounce per gallon, you're getting less carbon buildup than the cheaper competitor. Now, is that going to be something long term? You run this premix and you're going to get 10,000 extra miles out of your engine versus running the cheap premix. I can't answer that question for you. I have not driven rotary cars long enough. I tend to either break them or change them before I can do a long term study like that. And unfortunately, the lovely study of this engine right here, this REW with iRotary Apex seals, it's getting put in a drift car. So it's going to get the rods kicked out of it, for lack of a better term. The Apex seal is hopefully not kicked out of it. But it's going to be hard to do a wear test on this engine because its use is going to be what I would say is outside the normal use of anybody else's engine. So what I'm going to keep doing is just documenting my experiences and the variables that I am controlling for you guys such that we can all have these data points in the world of rotary engines to kind of understand what things work better with others, the different combinations you can run, and what products or seals or resurfaced housings versus not or this, that, and the other actually make these engines reliable and last longer than just a typical rebuilt in your backyard engine. Hopefully with all that being said, you guys learned something in this video and took away something of value because as much as big fancy race shops and cool engine dynos and all that stuff can yield crazy results. Unfortunately, there isn't that much support for the rotary engines when it comes to big money racing groups and such that are going to document all their wear and do all these testing and, and figure this out for us. So we're kind of left with me and my little garage building some stuff, running some stuff, and just showing you guys what the results are. And maybe, you know, over the course of the next 10 years or 5 years or whatever, we keep playing with these rotary engines, we're just going to keep learning more stuff every day. And that is the goal. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment below any experiences that you have had running different apex seals at different premix ratios, at different engine setups, rich versus lean versus how would you blow your engine up, etc. What did you attribute the failure to? And I'm going to keep doing the same thing here, and I'll keep making videos like this to help you guys make good decisions about what parts to put in your car. I can't tell you whether one part's better or not. None of this stuff was free. We paid for all of it. Fortunately, my buddy Richard is an awesome guy and lets me do some test stuff with his cars and build engines for him, kind of picking and choosing the parts he uses so that we can test stuff out. And luckily enough, we're able to get some biorotary racing premix for the duration of the year so that I could keep Richard's car fed to run this test. So I'm super happy with the results and I'm going to keep trying stuff and get excited for the future. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Keep it rad. We'll see you in the next one. I tell y'all what, this engine spit the front main seal out and it has spit oil on everything. If there isn't oil under your rotary engine, on the ground, there definitely isn't oil in it. Peace, guys.